All right, guys, I'm gonna run you through how exactly cold exposure prepares you for the winter, why it's such a good tool to use, how it's a necessary evolutionary um, adaptive system and mechanism, and uh, the biochemistry behind how it actually changes your metabolism and such. So first off, we've got body heat. When you do cold exposure, it activates a thermoreceptor called TRPM8, it's a protein, right, called TRPM8. And this sends a signal through the nerves and that releases norepinephrine, it causes a norepinephrine release. And what this does is create more brown fat cells. So this increases the production of brown fat cells, which are rich in mitochondria and also a protein called uncoupling protein one. When you have more mitochondria, you're gonna be more, you're gonna have a higher BMR, higher metabolic rate. And what that's gonna do is increase your thermogenesis overall, increase your body heat production. And also with uncoupling protein one, when we have a lot of that, it's gonna allow protons to leak from the electron transport chain. Um, and instead of being converted into ATP, it's gonna get converted into body heat. Next, we have mitochondrial biogenesis. So, in the cold, this gene called PGC1-alpha also stands for peroxisome proliferated um, activated receptor Y coactivator. Um, it's gonna increase mitochondrial biogenesis. So you're gonna have more mitochondria, right? Um, your basal metabolic rate is gonna go up again, even more. And that's gonna increase beta oxidation, so fat oxidation. So you're going to be metabolizing fat more, um, and it's going to, so it's going to be more of a fat-based metabolism, and this is going to produce so beta oxidation. A product of beta oxidation is acetyl CoA, right? And to enter the next stage, um, to enter the TCA cycle, the citric acid cycle, acetyl CoA needs oxaloacetate. Um, to enter that cycle, but when you're in a ketogenic state, when you're fasting, because your insulin is low, um, uh, you're not going to have enough oxaloacetate. So there's going to be a buildup of acetyl CoA in the liver, and the liver is going to convert this into two acetyl CoA molecules into acetoacetate, which is a ketone body which can be converted back and forth with beta hydroxybutyrate. So those are the two ketone bodies. So you're gonna have increased ketone body production. So cold exposure is a great way to get into ketosis, um, great way to become fat adapted um, if you're relying off carbs right now. Third one is with hormones. So usually the thyroid is triggered to create hormones, the T4 and T3 through thyrotropin releasing hormone, which activates thyroid stimulating hormone. But when you have less food, less so-called calories, which you would in the winter, naturally, maybe not today, but naturally you would, um, your TSH is gonna drop. So you're gonna have less thyroid hormone production, your thyroid's not gonna work well. But in the case of the cold, um, if you're cold adapted, thyrotropin releasing hormone is gonna act on the thyroid directly. So you're not gonna to have to go through TSH. So your thyroid hormones are not gonna drop. So they stay stable. And also leptin sensitivity in the cold goes up, which means you're satiated for longer because leptin is the satiety hormone. So you're gonna have less food cravings. You're gonna be way more satiated um, if you're cold adapted in the winter. Naturally in the winter you would, but only if you're cold adapted for modern people. So how can we apply this practically? So we've got one, cold showers. Cold showers or baths. And what you wanna do with the bath is you want to take the temperature, match it to your environment, and also you can track your progress. Um, so over time you'll want to be able to be kind of comfortable in the cold at the temperature which your environment will be in winter and so you want to gradually decrease that temperature of the bath as you keep doing it routinely de decrease the temperature and you'll have to use a thermometer to track that so that can track your progress um, you want to do walks in the cold with minimal clothing t-shirt and shorts optimally 
you would be naked, but if you're out in public, you know. So it walks in the cold. And another thing is you wanna eat less, less frequently. Not necessarily less food, less mass overall, but you wanna eat less frequently. So this is either OMAD or TUMAD, uh, one meal a day or two meals a day. Um, optimally you would do one meal a day, but you can kind of transition into this. All you want to do is just eat less frequently because this is going to keep your insulin lower and help you to get into a state of ketosis where you're relying off ketone body production rather than um, glucose. So another thing is you want to support the mitochondria as they go through this change. And you can do this by grounding. That's going to support it. Um, by the electrons coming from the ground, the microbes coming from the ground, right? That's going to support the mitochondria. Sun exposure, right? Sun is great for the mitochondria. The red light um, is great for the mitochondria. The mitochondria feed off light, basically. And another thing is mineral balance. So your mineral balance has to be good for the mitochondria to work properly. So if you're eating raw meat, your mineral balance is going to be fine. Um, yeah, but if you're not, um, some great things are oysters for mineral balance. You don't want to have too much salt. Optimally, you wouldn't have salt at all, but um, if you're just kind of a normie, you're not fully into the raw meat diet, then uh, try to eat less salt. You want to have like a higher potassium to sodium ratio and um, magnesium and so on. So yeah, um, oysters are really great for this, but if you're already on a raw meat diet, then that'll be fine. So yeah, this is basically um, how cold exposure adapts your body to the winter. Biochemically, it adapts your metabolism to creating more heat, to relying off fat better, to relying off ketones better. Um, so it's a really important tool, and this is why so many tribes have used it, like the Inuit, the um, Eskimos, the, the tribes in Siberia, the Sami in Finland, in Scandinavia, and so on. This is why they've used it. Um, it's such a deep evolutionary tool. Um, and now because our temperature and light signals are so messed up, we have you know air conditioning and we're always wearing like thick clothing because we're not adapted to the environment. Our metabolism is messed up. Like we can't be properly adapted to winter. Naturally, you would be exposed to the cold on, its, on your own. But as we moved out of nature, more into civilized industrial societies, we've, we've um, kind of hid from the cold. So we can't naturally become adapted to the cold. We have to do cold exposure, use, tool, use this as a tool to become adapted again. And if you want more guides like this, um, I have heaps like this in my private community, slideshows and so on. We do discussion calls and whatnot and have active chats. So if you're interested in that, uh, there's a link down below. Also an application for private coaching one-on-one -on -one, um, with me and another creator, Nicodem, who I run the community with as well. Um, if you're interested in any of that, um, go check that out. But if you like the video, like this type of content, click the like button, subscribe, and um, let me know what kind of topics you want me to do next. Um, if this form of how I've recorded this video is good. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys.